Welcome, everybody. Hello. Everybody's uh, been requesting it, demanding it. We've been getting, you know, mentions, comments, emails. The comment section is constantly, when is Koopo making a return to the Kooligan? And then finally, everybody. Christine Cooper has arrived. What's up, Christine? Let's go. Uh, happy to be back for <laughs> this 2024 first installment of the Koopigans. Yes. By the way, I'm really glad that that was like the moniker that the people chose because yeah. I thought about it and it really could have been like Kulo. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very the, bad. The, I don't know how I would have promoted that or put that on a CV. Welcome to the Kulo live <laughs> on OnlyFans. <laughs> we out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Look at this. So people chose they, they chose the right uh you know the right name for the for the I, show. I appreciate the Golly Squad more <laughs> than you imagine. Thank you, y'all. Uh so thank you. Welcome everybody. It's the Cooligans, buddy. As always, my name is Christian Polanco. It oh it's always my name hasn't changed. Uh but <laughs> 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 so. His aliases may have. I don't know. Okay. Does, does your wife know that you have several families now? Christian Kulo Polanco. <laughs> I mean, Loki, I called you that behind your back, but it's nice that it's that's out what, in the open now. That's what they call me. I, everybody, every time they see me, they just yell, Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Sticking out your get for the Rizzler. Right. I'm like, hey, chill, folks. I have a family. I am still the uh, Christian Cupo. That life is behind me, just like my ass, apparently. Um, anyway, uh, we have a, a lot to discuss today. Like uh, we mentioned uh, uh, the other day, obviously, uh, uh, Alexis is away. He's on vacation. He, has, he is in London. So if you are, uh, you know, a, a Londoner. And you see, uh, hide, man, <laughs> hide your pizzas, all right? Because Alexis is coming for him. Uh, but Alexis out, is out in London, so uh, yeah, we're gonna be having uh, uh, guest co-hosts, and we have a couple uh, interviews that that are gonna be coming up in, in the None next. None uh, better than me, though. Uh, this is the best, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, but a lot to go over today in the world of footy. We have to start with the news about. Giovanni Reina. Gio Reina is uh, leaving uh, Dortmund on loan. He's going to be going to the Premier League, uh, which is also great. He's he's also a lot of people not away. He was born in Sunderland because obviously his dad, um, uh, uh, Claudio Claudio. Reina, Mm -hmm. played uh, in England uh, where where he was born. Uh, And uh, so, no, so so let's just talk about this move because I just want to highlight two things. Obviously, Gio Reina. Uh, people were uh, saying like he it, it might be a signing, uh, he might be, uh, make a full transfer, but no, it's it is only a loan, no option to buy. Uh, so he it's basically a six month audition uh, to just uh, either try to get some playing time at Dortmund or just raise his value for Dortmund so they can move him somewhere else and actually get uh, money that they feel is uh, you know pro, uh, 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 equitable to his value, but. The the announcement itself, and I just want to play it really quickly because uh, Nottingham Forest they did they did the the video, uh, uh, you know, saying that uh, Gio Reyna is coming, but let, it's twenty seconds long. Let's just uh, hear it and, and see it very quickly. From Sunderland to the Big Apple, I crossed the pond when I was five. From New York to Germany and in Nottingham, I now arrive. I'm ready to work hard. I'm ready for the challenge, and I can't wait to attack the Premier League with this amazing club. I'm Gio Reyna, and I'm a red. I'm Gio Reyna, and I'm a red. For six months. This is not even, it's like, it seems very serious to be like, I'm, that's it. You could, you can tattoo the badge on my, on my chest. It's like, no, nah, bro, you just, it's just for a little bit. If we're just going to see You're how you alone. do. <laughs> You're alone, and you need the minute. You so, need the minute, right. You know what, quite frankly, I would tap dance if I were him. I would do whatever <laughs> Nottingham asks right, me right, to right. do. As long as it means I'm getting starts and I'm getting regular minutes. Exactly. And and so, look, I'm sure, yeah, they asked them to, you know, help uh, uh, make these videos. But these these videos are usually for, like, right, big signings. Big signings. Right. And, and not to say it's not, a, it's not a big signing, but it is a very temporary move. But also, is he a big signing? Let's yeah, relatively. Yeah, he's, it is not, no disrespect to Gio Reyna. What, what it will do, it will cultivate more of an American audience. Sure. And that's, I'm sure, part of their... Thought process in because, doing I, this little project. And it's possible that we may not see Matt Turner ever play again. So we need another <laughs> American on the pitch. <laughs> so I'm hoping, you know, that isn't the case because Nottingham Forest also signed uh, for Brito Romano just tweeted out that there's a Matt, Matt Sells, I believe his name is. I forgot what club he's coming from. But that Nottingham Forest is signing a goalkeeper. And after the... Uh, 
how much like the game against Arsenal? Matt Turner gives up a goal against Gabriel Jesus at his near post. Get, kind of gets nutmegged. It's a bad. It's a bad goal to give up. It was a fundamental goalkeeper error. Yeah, and you don't want to see that at this juncture, especially mm. for someone like Matty, who, quite frankly, has both honed his skill, has talent, and was a walk on. Right, so he's very much self made. Yeah, yeah. And so to make it to this level with with Arsenal to get sent to Nottingham, which was the smart thing in essence, right? Again, I'm going to say a Playing lot. Time, yeah. In theory, right? You want the minutes. You go to Nottingham, and you're not excelling in the way that you have before. So is this a slump, or is this indicative of who you are actually as a player? Now, when you're making errors like that, it's it's pretty disgraceful. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I would say the, the errors he made earlier in the year, which, which is like... You know, passing out of the back, giving it to the to the opposing right. team. You no, know, with that having been said, there are plenty of other world goalkeepers who yeah. you would rate highly that have made similar errors like that, which For are sure. just glaringly yeah. embarrassing. It's okay? just that you, you can't be American and <laughs> right. make those mistakes. I'm sorry. I mean, there's no. I was like, how am I supposed to wave my American flag and take my pet bald eagle for a walk? You can't. There's too much. <laughs> too much bias. There's too much. You just can't. I mean, you could be. What do I do? Born. How do I store all of my American elitism <laughs> if you embarrass me globally? No. Um, and it's not even like it's not even out of a like I I do want him to do well, but it's like more than anything, I don't want him to be uh, uh, criticized more harshly because he's American, and that will happen if you make mistakes and yes. are American. Yeah. That's just you're, the, you're that's going just the reality. To be harshly judged as an American on a world football stage. Yeah. Regardless of your gender. So maybe I have found the one true equalizer in the world. It's like, be American. Everybody. Everyone hates you. No. Um, we hate American men and women <laughs> equally. Okay? So don't do, come up, don't come to me with any sexist stuff. I feel so patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so we, as far as Gio Reyna's, um, how do we expect him to perform? The the issue with not Nottingham is not, they're not necessarily a terrible team, right? They, I mean, they... They they can't defend. This is why this is why I kind of de, uh, defend Matt Turner a little bit. When he was at Arsenal, yes, he didn't get a ton of minutes, but he wasn't facing the same types of challenges and shots that right. That, you that have an is. entirely competent yes. squad. Yeah. Okay. It, Granted, it, sometimes a little wonky, but <laughs> all in a top shelf superior team. Uh, without a doubt, what so one of the like I mean, as far as uh, uh, Saliba and 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 Gabriel. Martinelli. I, Martinelli. Like, I, mean, well, I mean, that whole squad. I'm sorry. I, okay, I'm showing my gooner. Okay, I, I am an Arsenal supporter. Full hey, blur it. Everybody blur it. Say, that, <laughs> you gotta blur it. Weird. Don't just, you can't just show your gooner out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be careful. There's kids watching. <laughs> I forgot this wasn't rated MA. <laughs> Silly me. I'm so sorry to the entire Dan Levitar network. I'm sure you've never said anything worse than I have at this point. Oh, no. Um, yeah, remember when. Uh, <laughs> Stugatz asked Walker Zimmerman did, like how how Christian Pulisic's penis was yeah. doing yeah. after the World Cup. Just and Walker Zimmerman was just like, bro, like I've I've been asked some strange questions, but this is absurd. Yeah, that's not even like top fifty. No, 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 not at all. It's just look. I, no, no, I'm, I'm saying what Christine just said. That's, okay, not, okay. Even, that's not even close. To I'll it. I'll try worse. Okay. <laughs> You're in Alexis's chair. You have to go for yeah, it. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. It's a little bit problematic. All right. Uh, so uh, I forgot. I feel like I interrupted something. Yo, about you were saying about Arsenal uh, and and basically how well they play yeah. and 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 Matt Turner sort of being there. So the, yeah, it, it's it's essentially a uh, it, Nottingham Forest need a unbelievable goalkeeper. They, they essentially the way. Um, Everton stays in games is because Jordan Pickford yes. has to have two or three unbelievable Agree. Agree. stops. But I think you have to look at it too from a player perspective, right? When he moved to Arsenal, that's like the dream move. You go, yeah. even if you know you're not getting that yeah. starting position and you're absolutely right in assuming you're never getting that starting position, right? Mm -hmm. um, and once at Arsenal, you're hoping to cultivate and sort of sponge up some of the learnings that you can get yeah. from some of the best players and trainers in the world. Now, making the move to Nottingham, the move was in favor of minutes, okay? Yeah. So it's take what I've learned and try to demonstrate that I am the best of what I can be. And unfortunately, 
I think we haven't seen that as, as much as we had in the past with, with Matt Turner. Yeah. So, I mean, but Nottingham as a whole, for sure. Like, the squad that got them promoted isn't the squad that they are now. They made a number of player changes, contracts that were – uh, extended, alleviated, new contracts, new players. You know, yeah. the running joke was that they signed everyone and they kind of had. And now Gio joining the squad, someone who has what, like a start to his name at this point under Dortmund and then 200 plus or so minutes. It, I think that we have to have this come to Jesus about him as a player at this point, because at what point are we talking about Gio Reyna the aptitude of Gio Reyna and the brilliance we think we can see in him yeah. and what he's actually shown versus injury versus him not being able to meet with opportunity when it's presented with him. Yeah, it's a it's we get our we get our hopes up, especially when we see him with uh, uh, wearing a U.S. men's national team shirt. He has good moments. He scored. Uh, who did he score against? I forgot in the, the recent games, uh, but he does look sharp. So it, it's one of those things where. You're like, damn, why can't he get any minutes at Dortmund at all? And the, and but it's not like people at Dortmund are like, oh, he's problematic or he's uh, difficult right. in the but locker room. I think They're the like, thing no, that it's just can, radio silence. The thing Nobody that we anything. continue to hear, though, is that, you know, question of his work ethic, question about his attitude. So if you are consistently performing and you're good in the role that you're playing, both of those things can be manageable. When you're not consistently performing and you also have those whispers, whether or not they are true or speculative, you become less desired in a squad. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what you just said, Christine, about um, Matt Turner, like moving to Nottingham to get minutes, I feel like that's very much the same thing that Gio Reyna is doing right now. It's like, OK, you know, we've heard all about all your talent. There's obviously whispers about your attitude and stuff. But we haven't seen you play consistently for a right. long time. And now we just want to see, really, do you have it or do you not have it? Yeah. I Look, the, the, my main concern is that go, if you go from Dortmund, uh, a, a team that is usually dominating most of the teams in the Bundesliga as far as with possession. And they, they maintain control most of the time. And Giro Reyna gets, when he plays, is sort of a part of that. And you're going to be playing on Nottingham. You're not going to have the ball a lot. You're going to be playing counterattacking football. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you're you going to have to defend quite a bit. I'm, I'm Also, acknowledging that Premier League is starkly different doubt, from yeah. Bundesliga play. Yeah, yeah. So for me, in my analysis of all of this, that's a bonus for Gio, okay? Because Premier League, you get a different test at hand that's confronting you. Now, are you going to be able to rise to the challenge here and prove to essentially the world, and especially anyone that could potentially want to purchase you from Dortmund, that you are the player that everyone's rumored you to be. Yeah. If if this was if this loan was happening, uh, I guess loans don't really happen in the middle in the beginning of the season. Not no, usually. For Sometimes. A four year loan for a four year loan. It depends. Loan. Like, yeah, are yeah. you performing? Are you underperforming? Are you very young and it, you know you're not going to gain the minutes? The question here is now: Why are you not good enough to start for Dortmund? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But period. It, I'm just worried about g g getting into the Premier League. It, with a team that's, you know, staring at the face of relegation. And, right. and I'm sure he's got a relegation clause in that loan. Sure. Well, I mean, what will be like instant ejection. <laughs> 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 he parachutes back into Germany. <laughs> but the, the, simply the, the, the uh, like you said, the speed of the Premier League, he, the, he's going to have no time to adjust to this league. Right. Uh, and and so, this is what I mean by are you going to be able to meet with the opportunities that are presented to you. Yeah. And unfortunately, everyone has talent. It doesn't mean that you have the same talent. Everyone has talent. Everyone is capable of doing the work and training. Mm -hmm. Are you able to meet with whatever that yeah. opportunity is to your success? And so far, that hasn't been the case. Yeah, this is going to test his will for <laughs> sure. I mean, it, it's going to be a, a, a difficult uh, challenge and hurdle in his career. And – and it's again, it's much different than being at Dortmund. At, at Dortmund, they were, uh, you know, a couple, a goal away or two goals away from winning uh, b the Bundesliga last year, right. and 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 he he contributed a little bit more than uh, obviously than he's doing this season. But there is a a, a much different standard, and uh, you know, he's never he's never played at a club that which is like where he's been in this 
kind of situation. Right, and like so, Nottingham currently sitting 16th in the table. And, uh, and who also might be facing a points deduction because they're currently <laughs> under investigation as well. So it could be really, really bad. Um, so I, I, I'm interested and excited uh, for him. I, and, nothing, and you know what? Nothing you would know, make me happier. Santo could be good for him. Yes, yeah. I, I okay? hope so. So of the things that I count as assets is new terrain. Mm -hmm. Should he desire to try to meet it, right? Uh, new management, which could be very, very favorable for him. And we'll see how it shakes out. But I think that it's interesting, and, and maybe this is a little bit of it too, is the expectation that has been placed on him as a player and as an individual that at this point I feel like is a little bit undue because how much of it is an exaggerated reality of yeah. what people want it to be? Mm -hmm. Because you see this across U.S. men's national team players often. If not every single time we get a youth product that seems to be promising, somebody wants to anoint them as the next thing, right? But you have really great players like Pulisic, like McKenney, like Wea that are thriving that you can see elsewhere um, that don't for some reason necessarily get crowned with this like you're it you have to be yeah, yeah. i mean the, you know there's a little bit of the the nepotism obviously of, of his father right. who his father is and and then also uh, you know uh Wea's parents didn't get you know didn't try to <laughs> extort <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> the coach of the men that's what they, you know what i mean <laughs> anyway we're rooting for you geo <laughs> So next topic is another, some more Premier League news. We've got Tottenham versus Brentford yesterday. Tottenham won 2-1 on the final scoreline. But I think what everyone's really talking about is Neil Mopai's antics. The man is back at it yet again. He might be the biggest menace in the Premier League. I'm not sure if you guys agree with that. But he was making fun of James Madison's celebration, obviously just trying to wind up his opponent. What do you guys make of Neil's shithousery, for lack of a better term? I think, first of all, I think they won 3-2, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 3-2, my three, bad. 3-2. Oh, good, oh, good. It was a goal fest. It, it was really, a, it really was a great was. game, uh, and you didn't... Uh, you, but also lopsided. Brentford really thought they had that for at least they, the first they half. Score, Neil Mopai thought he had it. He scored, <laughs> <laughs> he scored first, um, which is also as a... Well, seeing also a former Everton player, I'm just like, bro, well, you couldn't do that for us a little bit? No, that would have been nice. You know, I would have loved this swag, uh, you know, after scoring a goal. But I think he, he scored maybe one goal for Everton in his uh, entire time there. Um, but, yes, this was a, a big talking point. Neil Mopai scores a goal. Um, and I think what I forgot what I ended up, it was like a deflection. or ended up at his feet or something. And and, and he, he tapped it in. I don't I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. it was. There were some bubbles. proper goal. Proper. He had another good, another good one. That 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 turn. He, he like two weeks ago. He had he dropped the ball and then turned. He was left foot to the bottom corner. It was a great goal. Um, but the he does the celebration. I don't know what beef. I don't know if he has beef with James Madison. I don't know or, or something. So. Does it Spurs? Look like I have beef with everyone? Yeah. Like that's yeah, yeah. his personality trait. Because like, didn't um Saka did this also? Uh, when he scored when he scored against Spurs, I don't remember. I I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was, yeah, the dart, uh, throwing the dart celebration. Um, he did this, uh, but I don't know if it was against Spurs. And uh, we're looking at the, the the picture here of Neil Mopai doing the celebration. And it, it, there was a lot of banter, especially after the game. Obviously, Brentford lost. Neil Mopai went on Instagram, uh, and he, he put the comment, uh, went a bit early with that one. Gutted we couldn't get the win. More goals and less relegations in my <laughs> career than James Madison. Even after he loses, bro, he's so shameless. <laughs> right, like, he's just your quintessential <laughs> villain. Like, yeah. you need them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's fun to see. Uh, I, but I, this also felt like um, a, is this a thing against Spurs? Is he a, is, is Neil Mopai showing his gooner? You know what I mean? I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I didn't know. I, look, I don't know the history, so I'm, I was just curious. But there was – James Madison did respond uh, afterwards. Uh, where, oh, damn, where's the uh, – where is it? Uh, I'll find it later. But the James Madison uh, essentially said that, um, the, you know, what did uh, – after, uh, uh, after they scored and they were up three or something like that, uh, he was at, they were, he was asked, what did, uh, what did he say to, what do you say to him? And he said, um, oh, you, um, you probably, he, 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 you don't score enough goals to have your own celebration. So you had to copy mine. Just great. I love it. Again, huge fan it's of the bands. It's a great clap, clap back. <laughs> I, I just, I, the, you know, 
Neil Mo- also Bradford, uh, I think uh, Tottenham they scored three unanswered, and then uh, then Ivan Tony. Well, they scored three in a ten minute span yeah. in the very first ten minutes yeah. of the second half, with the first two being like just over a minute and a half. Yeah, in that, it, it was bananas. Uh, but also, you know, a lot of it was just. Anj Postacolu switched up tactics. Mm-hmm. He pushed Kulusevsky inside a little bit, uh, got them to use the width. Like the the nimbleness that Spurs actually have, you're welcome. I'm giving you a compliment, <laughs> okay? Um, is remarkable. Like Postacolu is really, really smart and he's like low key about it too. But I, it begs the question, why didn't you start the way that you started the sure. second half? Yeah, right? I mean, look, like, I, it's good to uh, uh, be honest about, oh, you know, it didn't, I, like, I didn't, oop, I, I didn't, flubbed it. I didn't start <laughs> the game uh, with the proper uh, kind of strategy in mind. But it, it's always a, a great thing to see the when when the team comes out in the second half and in the first two three minutes are like, oh, it's a completely different team. Like Brentford were like, yo, this is not who we. This is not who we played against in the right. first half. I mean, like, this is but also, like, you have Prime Richarlison playing again, which, which is wild. Which remarkable. Right? Um, it sounds like an oxymoron. Prime and then, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this was actually Ivan Tony back from ban. So mm-hmm. you kind of have all of the parts that you were missing yeah. on I, each I, side. I thought I thought Spurs were gonna. Uh, you know, uh, dropped uh, at least two points. You know what I mean? They they uh, they, they, they give them a towards, run. The, towards that the, the last like ten minutes of the game, it was like, all right, well, Spurs are gonna are gonna be Spursy, yeah. as they say. Um, I, I've been Tony Discord go after. I, I think it was some a mistake or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Dogi did a little. And the yeah. Dogi had a great game. He had a so so game because he did. Let's put it this way. If he hadn't have scored the goal, yeah, yeah. It would have his been a, two errors, <laughs> one game, yeah. of which that goal caused that goal, yeah, yeah. Uh, would have been a lot worse than it was. But he was putting so much pressure oh, yeah. on the uh, and getting through right, uh, the you Brentford have to, midfield. You have Ivan Tony back, who hasn't been able to play. Mm-hmm. You know he's dying to score a goal. Yeah, I think after not having seen Ivan Tony play for so long and then just watching him, he's playing with... It's also remarkable that he's like, fit and fine like he didn't eight months taking off eight months and like not not really losing a step you start realizing like bro this dude is not only he's like really good but he's like one of the better Premier League players mm-hmm. he's just uh, he at like physically that's I think that's the first thing I noticed like he's not really um he's not getting pushed off the ball at all I know he went to like Nashville to do a bunch of training, training. and stuff like that I'm like yeah. I mean I think the entire time he was training but Training is no substitute for actual playing, which mm-hmm. but it feels, is evident. But it, but it, which is true, but it feels like it sort of is, <laughs> right? It's a complete substitute because he seems totally comfortable. Yeah. Um, he missed a, one pretty good chance in the mm-hmm. game, but he ended up obviously uh, getting a goal. Uh, but uh, overall, the, uh, the I, I enjoyed this um, the 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 chaos of the game, and I and you know when when Richarlison scored. Um, the he 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 went he did the the dart celebration again and pointed at at, at Mopai yeah. uh I which is again just <laughs> lovely um I, what was who was the third goal Brendan Johnson Brendan Johnson kind yeah, of yeah Brendan Johnson through, really, like, oh, okay, really <laughs> he did the like <laughs> 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 I'm like okay all right we why we in sixth grade again <laughs> because he really leaned into it um so the, I I loved just uh having having this kind of fun um because you don't really see the the literal banter on the pitch you know the Neil Mopai and James Madison you uh, after Mopai scored and did the celebration. Mopai went up to, I think, or Madison went up to Mopai and like mm-hmm. hugged him. Yeah. And but it was like a, but like this a, was a fight hug. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Madison's. It was his first start since in like yeah, months yeah he's been because, injured yeah, yeah, yeah. He, ankle right yeah if yeah I yeah I don't remember right. but like almost three months of him not starting and, and all this, of a sudden now he's this? just like. Bro, you're going to what? Let's go. Yeah. I was on my deathbed. <laughs> this is how you treat me. <laughs> I didn't know if I was even going to come back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just lovely. Love it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this stuff. So uh, just more of it. I don't know if they like I, I would love to see a celebrity boxing match between these two guys. <laughs> I mean, why not? I don't even know if they have any bad blood, but it's, I don't know. Fight I feel like Mopai could fight. I don't know so much about Mopai is French. Right? Yeah, he's French. I don't know if he can really. Fight. <laughs> he can. Is that a thing? Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Are we make, making up a stereotype? Do the French know how to fight? Just let me know. That's a good question. Um, 
I know. Well, historically, no. <laughs> they know I, how in to my protest. experience, I've played with a lot of French men. Uh-huh. Football, to be specific. Sure. Um, <laughs> and they're hotheads. But okay. I, they're mostly all talk. Ah, interesting. Okay. I'm pretty sure I could beat up Pat. <laughs> I was going to say, Neil Bopa seems like the kind of guy that is one a of my lot favorite... of talk. And if like anything really popped off, he'd not really be about it. One of my favorite <laughs> things in uh, in France is, and I think they do, I think this is like an annual thing where the, the firefighters fight the cops. Have you seen this? Every, what? They, Wait, I would like to implement that here in New York because <laughs> we have like a, a, a firefighter and, uh, you know, uh, like a, the hockey game. Yeah, the, it's a co- street hockey game. A, a hockey game. With the, and there's a soccer game as well. Uh-huh. Um, but every year, because, uh, you know, I guess they get uh, oh, There's got to be. I mean, upset. I, I box. Too, there, I have to find out. There's got to be boxing. <laughs> something... Because I'm pretty sure there is NYPD boxing. There has to be FDNY. So now I have to find the actual boxing bout because okay. now I'm curious. <laughs> because. So they do. Um, it, it's a. Uh, it's usually protesting about. Um, I don't know if it's like you know whatever the, the retirement age. Like in France, they're very very serious about like not taking away like uh, uh, social sort of social services. programs. Social yeah, programs like here. And, and <laughs> so the I think it's you know they. I feel like this happens every year. The the and there's firefighters literally like going fisticuffs with cops. And it's just like, because, all right, it's like, all right, this is what we do. This is like, it's part of the culture. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, didn't mean to uh, go there, but we we have to ask the tough questions I was say, sometimes. Questions. <laughs> okay. So coming back home from England, we've got some news that actually just dropped. I think it was earlier today um, in an article that was written, yeah, two hours ago, that dropped two hours ago from our friend Meg Linehan uh, interviewing Lindsay Horan. Obviously, U.S. Women's National Team player. What team does she play for in Europe? Lyon. 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 Um, over there, the it was a you know there's a lot of interesting stuff in the interview, but I think the quote that's getting the most attention, mostly because the Athletic put a massive graphic of it <laughs> in quotes, was uh, Lindsey Horan said, "American soccer fans, most of them aren't smart. They don't know the game and they don't understand." Which obviously isn't a great look for U.S. Women's National Team player. What do you guys make of the quote? What do you guys make of the article? It's interesting news. I lo- I first of all I, I love. The athletic for just dropping this grenade on yeah. the internet. It's like boom. You have, know that enjoy. They just hit their like click quota for the next decade <laughs> like, with this one. Yes, you know, I if look if they would have uh, misquoted it and just crossed out soccer, yeah. but American fans, most of them aren't smart. Be like, oh wow, just leave they. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't draw any negative attention to the U.S. Women's National Team at all. Um, but yes, there is a little bit more context to this. Um, and essentially, if you read the the, the full article, uh, Lindsay Horan goes on to say that uh, essentially she, she gives an example about like her mother. And she says, like, you know, my mom even sometimes kind of falls prey to it where like, she pays attention too much to the commentators. And, and my mom will call me and she'll say, oh, Julie Foudy said you had a good game today. And uh, and I tell my mom, like, I, I played like shit. Like, what are you talking about? And, and, and she kind of just talks about the larger perspective of the game and, and, and as far as American fans understanding soccer. She says more people are getting knowledgeable around it, but, but most fans uh, are not really, like, aware of, like, I, I think the ins and outs of, of the game. Um, but even saying this at all, and I know we're, we're, look, we're looking at just the initial quote, which is going to get more attention, but just the, the, even that thought and, or, and even her choice to share that opinion, what do you think, uh, I don't know, what it, it, its effect could be? And is it even useful to say this? Quite frankly, I don't think so. I don't okay. think it's useful. I think it's an overgeneralization of her perception, and obviously I'm not going to purport to know what her view is or discredit what her view of sure, American sure. fans are. But I, what I will say in my experience as a woman who's played since she was four in this country, I think that the there are fewer soccer fans in this country, a lot of them women, more so growing men. But what I will say is due to the... I'd say smaller pool of soccer fans, they're incredibly knowledgeable because they are deeply passionate. They have been fans. Many have played uh, and will continue to be fans. I think that when you say things like American soccer fans, most of them aren't smart. They don't know the game. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. It feeds into a largely international lens perception of Americans as sports fans. Now, (laughs) We could say the same or similar about other countries, about basketball, about American football. And 
would it be entirely incorrect? No. But would it be the entirety of the truth? No. Or at, least, or at the very least, not super productive. Right? Because it's still going to be a generalization. Yeah. You, you don't actually know. But coming from uh, a, a respected women's national team player and captain, a really captain talented, of the team, yeah. right, a really talented footballer in general, I don't think it does a service to the game, to fans of the game in the States. I just I question what the function of this portion of the conversation was. Yeah, right? they, and granted, I'm sure it lacks some context, but it, it really it to me gives this sense of, you know, I have been around other people who know better and say better and say better. And what I will say about that is if you look at the men's side of the game in this country, they've largely hired in the past based on the same wrong ideas that outsiders know better than Americans, that we need to okay. hire Europeans to coach our squads that, you know, and to some extent, yes, it's true, but it doesn't mean that just because you're not American, that your opinion somehow or education is more correct. Yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of a, of, of a little bit of like the bias sort of around. She's, she is living in Lyon, the bias. living yeah. in Lyon, playing in France, uh, playing in, in, you know, in champions league. And, uh, it's obviously a very different, um, ambiance and environment. And people are, you know, I've gone to other European countries. Everybody knows the game. Everybody yeah. knows football. I, that, and that's fairly obvious. And it, it, I think it's, look, what she's saying is not, um, necessarily incorrect it's a little bit um inflammatory just for sure it's it's the most of them aren't smart that is just like <laughs> you can't you can't go back that part too <laughs> but then also you need to come in here and also dissect it further right because who are you who are this american fan base that you're referring to right is it men and women is it just women yeah and who are you comparing it to in contrast right because when you look at it from an American lens outwardly, right? The American women's program has been leaps and bounds ahead of everyone globally yeah. for a very long time. It's losing its foothold now, yes. I absolutely acknowledge that because all of the other uh, countries, leagues, and otherwise are now investing in their women's programs. But when I've been confronted as a non-pro with playing with men who have freshly come to New York from other countries, France, Italy, and otherwise who have never, ever played with women, and their understanding is that women don't really play, it, it makes me question who she's comparing it to. Because if you speak to any most men in Europe about women's football, women don't know football. Mm -hmm. right, women right. don't know how to play yeah, football. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're American or otherwise. Are you speaking to non-American women? And that's the lens that you're taking it from because also they've been prohibited largely from playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, English women weren't even allowed to play in schools right, up right. until recently. Mm -hmm. So I just question what lens we're viewing this from. Or maybe it's just Lindsay's exclusively American lens as now someone who plays abroad. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is a little bit of a response to the, the criticism after the World Cup, um, you know, because... You know, a lot of people are critical because and and maybe the the, the criticism isn't uh, the way she sort of expected it. Like the the Carly Lloyds, the Alexi Lalas, the people some of, sort of talking what about. What I will say to that is some of the criticism is absolute bullshit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flat out. OK, it's led by an agenda. It doesn't mean that it's objective, unfortunately, and mm -hmm. it always should be. At least when I'm looking at things, I try to be extremely objective. And when I'm not, I address the fact that I have some biases. So that way you know where I'm coming from when I say something, yeah. okay? And also the other problem with, um, with criticism of especially the US Women's National Team is a lot of it is not devoid of personal feelings about their political stances, mm -hmm. about their personal relationships, about how it's everything but what they do on the field, yeah, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. So I, if she's referring to that, then I wholeheartedly yeah, yeah. agree with her. But she said she said they don't understand the game. Like I agree with you. If they're yeah. talking like yeah, yeah. half of the American but media coverage is so I think that dumb. the perception like this could be that a lot of the criticism gets muddied by things like that. Yeah, it's true. I, I I think the you know and, and uh like I'm sort of speculating on like why she would say this. Right. So I don't exactly know why, but I just know that the regardless of the context of why she is spe specifically saying this statement is. 
it, look, it, it's it might be justified, and it's just totally her opinion, which is it's just totally fine. And she's entitled to her yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a little bit of I think as as American soccer fans, we have we all have like we all feel this sense of responsibility to sort of pr protect the game a little bit and and help to continue its growth. And this feels like something. Uh, 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 you, you don't want to hear this from Lindsay Horan, right? Like you would expect to hear from thing. other okay. people. <laughs> I'm not trying to like drop. My, I'm not trying to drop my own exclusive incendiary quote on the Cooligans <laughs> to like rival Lindsay. Don't worry, we'll put out but a graphic. And what everything. I will don't say worry. is, I have met a lot more American men that do not understand the game to the extent that a lot of the very passionate women's fans do, mm -hmm. and I would argue that Woso fans, especially in America are a lot more well-versed in the sport. Yeah. And they will hold you to task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think in, overall, um, because, you know, a lot of leagues are that, that Americans pay attention to are abroad, that, you, and a lot of you have said this, like that uh, the American fan tends to be a little bit more knowledgeable, even the European fan, um, about players, about leagues, and, and has a kind of a, a richer kind of soccer diet then you know you you, you talk to uh, people at nottingham forest and they know nottingham forest they know every player right but they're not they're not paying attention to like really bundesliga uh right. uh, uh said yeah like not, they not, eat sleep breathe their they're, team they're, exactly and i respect it right and we have that in a certain capacity here in the states but there's also an appreciation because i think from an american lens right we have our own domestic products but we also have an appreciation for the different leagues yeah. because they all bring something different. And I'll say this: I mean, we're 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 also in our own bubble where like everyone we know knows everything about the game, right? <laughs> yeah. So we, it, even for us, we can have a little bit of bias and being like, yeah, yeah, every, Americans know because everyone I no. talk to knows the game. What I will say is during, especially having covered the national teams during uh, large tournaments, World, World Cups, Cups yeah, qualifiers, yeah. things of that nature, we get a lot more. Uh, pedestrian fans totally and that's with any sport right that's like watching the olympics and being mm -hmm. like oh, all of a sudden i'm an expert in I snowboarding do that. i'm gonna hit that half pipe like which you see too right so curling I do, I yeah do think, really <laughs> that's a sport i do think though like <laughs> if you're going from that angle that like some of her quote does it has credence right sure because when you get everyone all together as a collective, you're going to see more of that where it's like, oh, you know, I'm kind of just like here for the fun times, yeah. but like I'm going to criticize all the same because mm -hmm. who doesn't do that? Like that's a whole pastime on many platforms on the internet. Isn't that why the internet was born? Yes. It's just, I mean, if, <laughs> look, if I'm doing, you know, public relations for the women's national scene or even just Lindsay Rand directly, I'm just like, this is. We we gotta tighten up this state yeah. a little bit. We gotta fix it. We gotta. You, you uh, Lindsay, you want to say American soccer fans? Most of them aren't smart. How about you say, you know, most of them are not fully aware of the details of the game. Yeah. To be that, fair, I'm they sure don't, they don't know <laughs> the intricacies. They don't understand that stuff. But I'm happy to help and explain. It's like when you just like yo, Real they talk? dumb as hell, dog. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> I'll, I'll put 50 on Lindsay was not anticipating that this quote would be her face with this quote in a graphic just dropped without, you know how many people just like click things and say like, yeah. oh, I can guarantee I haven't even gone on here because I haven't had time between studio and here to look at the quote tweets on this or the comments. Mm -hmm. But I assure you, people are already like burning photos of her without having read the piece. Like, and I'm sure like that LeBron the, leaving the piece Cleveland. is worth, right? Like I'm burning my Nike shoes. Like, um, Everybody's going to be burning pre-wrap today. <laughs> Hold on to your pink pre-wrap. It's going to be a riot. No, but real talk, like the, the lack of interest in hearing what she has to say beyond something like a snippet like this is part of the problem. Sure, sure. With Look, the way that people consume media. So I, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. And that, the problem is that a lot of people are going to read the headline and yeah. not read the article. Not the article. But the, uh, the article in itself is also very, very good. And Wait, shout we, out to we American, we don't read <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we ain't smart. Go to Lindsay Aram. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I think there's also a level of this of just like, and I hate this in every sport, and athletes in every sport do it. It's like, you didn't play the game. You don't know. And like to a certain aspect, they're right. Like we don't know the specifics of what it's like to be in a locker room. We don't know what it's like to have the pressure. But it doesn't mean you can't watch a game and give good commentary on it or critique, you know, yeah. players when they're not playing well. I, I, look, I, I liked it. In the rest of the article, she does highlight that, um, you know, she, she could have a poor game and the commentators will not essentially say that which this is the thing i i think happens a lot more in 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 woso where the 
the women are not as and and I've seen even women make this criticism of like that that there's like a lot of uh, sort of kid gloves in the way that when um, female players have bad games. It, it it feels like if you criticize a woman too harshly, that it, it it can it can feel like you're criticizing women's soccer as a whole. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to. So sometimes people don't want to come off as a misogynist and saying like if they call out a specific a specific player for having a bad game. So there's a there's a sort of gentler kind of uh, uh, analysis. And I've seen I've also seen women say this as well. That they that they think that for the growth of the game and the future of the women's game, that there has to be basically being like, yo, Lindsay was trash in this game. Why is she getting minutes? She shouldn't be playing. And which is like not a thing you see too much in women's soccer because the 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 game, it feels like if you are that sort of, uh, um, I don't know, toxic or harsh, that it, it could actually hurt the, the, the growth of the game. Counter. And this is something that I personally believe. OK. And I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I feel like you can be critical of a player without being cruel. For sure. And I feel like those lines are blurred more for men's sports. Mm -hmm. And those are lines that I personally choose not to cross. Okay. I don't think that I need to reduce my analysis of a player to you're trash because to me, that doesn't mean anything. There's no qualifiers yeah. there. I feel like if I'm going to talk about a player and say they had a bad game, I'm going to go into why I think they had a bad game, what they normally play like. I don't think it's necessary to be um, unnecessarily incendiary for the point of just like, I need to be like, I'm never going to pull up here and be like, I want to be Stephen A. Smith. Like, <laughs> it's just not happening. Right, right, right. And that's not anything against Stephen A. Smith. He has a brand. He has a style, yeah. and it lends itself to the sport. It's an interesting. I refuse like, to believe that the perception should be that analysis of women's games or commentary is kids' gloves. I think that it is more thoughtful, and I think that in a lot of ways, yes, it is somewhat protective because we don't want to have exactly that opposite side of the coin yeah. bleed into women's sports because it's just not a fundamental part of the game, and it's not helpful to the progression of it. I agree. I think there's a um, like you, you mentioned Stephen A. Smith and like he, we, I, you know, as a as a commentator, journalist uh, involved in sports, like the thing that he's who's he's doing with like Zion Williamson, where he's yeah. just like calling him fat yeah, over terrible. and over and over. It's I'm terrible. like, that's like that's a to me a clear example of just like wildly unnecessary. Even if it's like even if there's any accuracy to it, I'm like, why is that? How is this even like uh, productive? But I agree with the 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 sentiment of like, we don't need to bring this part of the men's right. game to the women's right. game. Like, why can't I sit there and say, oh, I think she had a weak game. She needs to work on her fitness. She's not fit. She has a weak left foot. These are all valid criticisms. Right. I don't need to pull up and scream into a microphone <laughs> and say, oh my God, who let her play for this team? She is shit immediately cancel her contract the way that people talk about the men's yeah, game. Yeah. And okay, that also doesn't mean that it's okay for the men's game, but unfortunately the culture that's been created around the dialogue, around players, dehumanizes them. And I refuse to do that further to women. It's a disservice to the sport. We're going over to Serie A now. We have a Serie A expert in the house. Let's Christine go. <laughs> we know we had to talk some Serie A. Um, the main thing we want to talk about is the American players are thriving right now. We've got Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney and Tim Way, obviously the big three, really performing well for AC Milan and Juventus. You know, what do you guys think this means for, I don't know, Christine, do you think it's helping the perception of American soccer over in Italy? Or do you think it's more just, hey, these are three individual players doing really well this season? I think first and foremost, you have to look at them as individuals, right? I think that the American part is less important to people abroad, whereas to Americans, it's very important yeah. because we obviously collectively, and I'll use the royal we there, have something to prove, especially in a league like Serie A that has largely been closed, especially to Americans. But for a long time, it was largely just Italians. So, I mean, I feel like when you saw Weston signing was, in my opinion, the biggest because he both had to be the pioneer to pave the way and also needed to put more skin in the game than some of the other players because, first of all, he was the first ever American signing for Juventus. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a record of success. Weston is a really, really multifaceted player that's worked both in his favor and against him in his career, in my opinion. And uh, to see him come out 
just like on fire when he joined Juve and making a splash in Champions League, it sent a major statement. Now, he developed and continued to grow despite unrest, managerial changes, tactical changes, uh, instances which maybe saw him even out of the squad, a few slumps, uh, a, a loan to Leeds, which in my opinion was a terrible decision, back to as early as this summer where you had Weston with a lot of speculation and not even speculation, but in the presser flat out dropped that, you know, McKenney and Bonucci were not central to this project upcoming yeah, yeah. for this season, mm -hmm. which was worrying to me because I have always valued McKenney as a player. Um, you can all go pull the receipts, okay? Um, <laughs> going back to, you know, just talking about him coming out of FC Dallas Academy. Like, he he's always had certain qualities that I like in a footballer. Um, and then summer stateside tour, sure enough, Bonucci gets sold off to Union Berlin. Yeah. Um, McKenney joins the squad in L.A. I had spent that those nine days with Juventus. Um, closed trainings, open trainings, yeah, yeah. saw that he was part of everything there. And I kind of for a while thought like maybe that was just a statement dropped to kind of light a fire under him to see if you can get this reinvigoration of him as a player. Now, with that being said, intro, we have two big signings simultaneously with Tim Weah joining Juventus, now the second American signing. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, as much as people loved or hated McKenney during his time there, he was the Serie A like leading American goal scorer for all that time right, right. until you have the presence of Christian Pulisic signing for Milan and creating quite a splash. Uh, great chemistry with that front line, overall squad, His, uh, uh, performing great. Look like think, a leader of the team. Again, um, I think Americans are quick to pull the trigger on. Oh my God, he's the greatest player alive. Okay, well, when go. you use the when you say Americans in trigger, I'm like, all right, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we can't. Sorry, <laughs> we can't slow down. Uh, <laughs> People, they already think to have right, too many stereotypes so, about us. Um, the way I just think it's interesting, though, coming from the perspective of the way that people speak of Christian and the way that they don't speak of McKenney in the same conversations, despite the fact that they have uh, nearly performed on par with each other um, in the same league. I agree. Um, and McKenney has seen this is flourishing again. Yeah. He's, he's at home uh, in Turin. Uh, he's, he's, Definitely Speaks part of Italian the uh, fluently. Louis parla se bene. I had no idea. Okay. Bro, I'm like, how do you learn? Uh, this is this is one thing. I, I was watching that the podcast that he did, and I was just like, yo, I need whatever footballers use to learn languages. I need this. Yeah, it's it's called a tutor. <laughs> is it and, okay? Is it, and, a, 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 is it an submersion? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> Torino, let's how? go. How fast? Because he speaks German fluently as well. Yeah. Uh, when, when, uh, when he was at Schalke uh, and stuff like that. But, but it's been like three years now. Four? Three, four? Th but still, that's impressive. Like, I mean, to do a podcast and just be like to talk. And it wasn't even right. like a, a, a formal thing. It's like he's talking to the homies, you know, using <laughs> slang. Yeah. You know what? Stuff. Like that's one thing that I actually did. I didn't realize. I knew he was learning but hadn't realized how much he was speaking because quite frankly and also like Weston – I had said to him in L.A., you know, in Boca Lupo this season, and I, I get a little bit mumbly sometimes, and he was like, what'd you say? And he, like, tried to correct my Italian, and oh, I looked wow. at him like I was offended. <laughs> man, I was offended. West, but then Weston when hit I, you with the Italian spleen, yeah, he bro. Was like, he was like, what'd you say? It's Lupo. Oh, I thought you said Lupa. And I was like, I've, I've now remembered. But when I saw that pod drop, and I was like. No, I was, I was, I was talking about my fupa. I'm like. <laughs> Que cazzo. Wow. Yeah, like, yeah. I was so surprised. That's amazing. But like he does, he speaks very well. Yeah, yeah. So the other part of that is like Juventini have embraced him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like they think of him as like he's one inarguably one of the biggest personalities on that team. Yeah, did you see that tweet of that guy that was criticizing him? Basically said like, oh, I, I uh, he's a, clearly a Juventus fan. He's like, oh, I love seeing, uh, you know, Weston play well and everything, but why does every uh, clip I see of him is him being like, a, like being goofy and silly? And everybody was just like, the Juventus well, support well. was like, whoa, Fun whoa, whoa. Police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not doing this, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you get, again, as an American, also as a black American, you're going to catch extra judgment unnecessarily mm -hmm. and criticisms where they don't belong in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. But he's performing. 
He's got a great personality Amazing. and the social team acknowledge it and know to lean into it. Dude, he's a star for he he on the Juventus amazing, TikTok. Right? But also like Timo, so Wea, like again, another asset to the team right now. He's out um, ill, may miss Milan, not great, but uh, has been an amazing asset on that flank. Like he adds a lot of pace, um, a lot of football IQ. He's a great contributor, mm -hmm. um, fun to watch. Uh, and I think he'll thrive there as well. Yeah. I, it just, but them linking up together is hilarious because yeah. Weston is full goofball and Tim is, he's way more chill, but like yeah. the good variety of chill. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, I mean, wh what do you think about the the goal that was stolen from Dusan, uh, that Vlavich. Dusan Vlahovic stole from, from, from our American king in Weston McKinney? <sighs> Dusan, Dusan, Dusan. <laughs> oh, he's trying to steal the spotlight, Dusan. Um, didn't, didn't he like uh, video, photobomb yeah, you or something like that? When, in LA, yeah, yeah. he did. Um, yeah. So look, clearly this is what he does. It's just what he does. It's his personality. <laughs> no, um, uh, I think he was just worried it wasn't going to go. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, that was a last second tap. I'm sure that Weston probably, you know, a little bit of rompicoli on him, broke yeah. his balls after. Um, no, but... So but th this has been uh, great to see this. But the whole squad, they're they're performing wonderfully. Yeah. As are Milan for the most part. Um, Milan have a, a lot a lot of strength, and to see um, Christian join the squad and play really fluidly with Leao and Giroud, um, Loftus Cheek, like they just they gel really well, yeah. and they know how to find each other. There wasn't really like a long runway for them to start kind of coming together. It, he's playing freely. Like, if anything, Milan was like a massive win for Christian because I feel like it got the monkey off his back mm -hmm. that he's been performing better than he has in seasons. And he actually seems happy. He does seem happy. That's like, a, it's, we're, I'm not used to seeing that at, he's, at, he's at Chelsea. Eat, he pray, <laughs> he's eat, pray, love it, okay? Like, <laughs> okay. He's finding himself, but he's... La pizza, la pasta. <laughs> he's, uh, uh, but not only that, it's just like the... the I, I love hearing... The the chance from the the Milan support, I love Pula. Like it, it's a you just again you're just not not used to seeing American players get that kind of like fanfare and like adoration. Again, I full disclosure, I'm of course partial to the Italiani and mm -hmm. Serie A and all of the tifosi there. They are some of the most passionate fans in the world, and when they you know bring you in as one of your of their own. Mm -hmm. You can almost nearly do no wrong. I think like, it helps. I think it helps to have a Croatian last name. Uh, they're, like, <laughs> they're like, oh, this yeah, that, that, that switch from that, <laughs> that, that switch from ick to itch. They're like, yeah, seamless. They're like, yeah, he's, he's our Luka Modric. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, no, it, it, it's great to see, and I think the, um, you know, it, it was rumored that Fiorentino was one of the clubs that were interested in Gio Reyna. A lot of people were saying, like, oh, that would be a really good move as far as, like, really getting minutes, get, putting yourself in pressure situations. From from my perspective, and I love Vincenzo Italiano. He plays, he likes a really, really attractive Called show. What a great. Um, what a, okay. How do you got that last know. name, bro? <laughs> he, I, I, I mean, that my would name be, was Cristian Dominicano. That would be, yeah. <laughs> that like, would wow. be the dream. But just, yeah, they really it nailed would, it. It would also be a matter of just like spend at Fiorentina. Right, but right. like the Viola absolutely have. They have something for seasons. Yeah, so uh, look, it, uh, it arguably could have probably been a better move for Who knows? For Gio. Maybe, Who knows? maybe down the road, should they find themselves in need? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, look, I, I, a lot to look forward to uh, with with these American uh, players in Serie A because it, it, I think for there was a little bit of, you know, Serie A is in this kind of transitional sort of place. So, like, I, I, obviously, everybody's competing with the Premier League and, you know, Serie A. I've, did you hear the thing about that they're considering... Uh, doing a relegation playoff, and uh, and then uh, then people were also suggesting like we should do a regular a real playoff for the champion. I, I, fans were like, never, I will <laughs> I will kill everyone <laughs> if you think you would ever do anything like that. So, uh, but, but I think just having these American players playing at these big clubs and and playing well and getting the fanfare is just something beautiful to see. So on top of being a Serie A expert, Christine, you also are an NWSL expert, hosting Attacking Third. You guys just won an award, correct? We did. did. We it won the literally within the hour. Um, we won the diverse sports. Yeah. 
Apparently, I can't. <laughs> I do English Doesn't good. No I am American now. <laughs> the Diverse Voices in Sports. Um, and congratulations. Congratulations. Shout out to Attacking Third. Um, yeah, I mean, shout out to the whole squad, especially to uh, Lisa Carlin, uh, Sandra Herrera, Darian Jenkins, yeah. uh, Jenny Chu. Um, who else am I missing right now? I'm, I'm definitely. You, know, you just say you know who you are at the end of an award yeah, yeah. speech. <laughs> right? I'm, like, I'm, I'm, in. I'm in. I'm terrible at this. I'm no, uh, but everybody uh, behind the scenes to yeah. Courtney Stith that has made this little engine that could go. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been a blast. Awesome. Um, I honestly have to count them all among my friends. I love them to death. Well deserved. Yeah. And so the biggest news in NWSL that we'll talk about has been the free agency signings and some of the you know just player movement that we've had. There's some been some big moves. That, uh, I'm gonna totally mispronounce your name if some, someone else would like to uh, take this one. So uh, Barcelona uh, to to uh, Bay FC Asisa Oshoala, yeah. uh, the Nigerian uh, striker we saw at the World Cup. Uh, uh, but that's definitely we should start there. There's a couple uh, names that we'll go through, but uh, Bay FC is uh, obviously the, uh, the, the the expansion club. They're gonna be playing in um, I forgot the name of the stadium. That uh, is, it, is it still PayPal Park. For the San Jose Earthquakes play? It's, I, I think so. I think it's still but also, I haven't slept yet. So. Yeah, it is PayPal. Play. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank All you, right. fact checker. Shout out, PayPal. <laughs> yeah, y'all are great. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> I use you from time to time. Um, but no, a huge uh, signing. You interviewed her, right? Yes. Uh, not uh, yeah. not too long ago. So Attacking third. Uh, interview dropped today, I believe. So you can yes. watch that and, and get the, the full on the YouTube um, and a partial, I think, on the Attacking Third IG. So I'm I'm uh, excited about the move, but the, 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 this is a sort of a thing with, you know, Barcelona players. And uh, we sort of heard this from even just just players that play in uh, La Liga Femenil is uh, where Esther made this comment a couple months ago about like, you know, the NWSL is like playing Champions League. Every single game is incredibly competitive, but we, we do know Barcelona in La Liga just absolutely dominate. dominate. The women's side. The men, mm -hmm. they have to have a lot to figure out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Much like in life. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but it says something to, you know, um, Oshawala, I saw that she mentioned that she like wanted a new challenge. And when you look at her resume won everything in La Liga. I don't know what could possibly be a challenge for her at this point, <laughs> quite frankly. She has won or been nominated individually or as part of a squad for almost every damn award. Right. Um, she's the six-time African Women's Soccer Player of the Year, which is nuts. Uh, she's played in China. She's played for Arsenal. She's played for Barca. She, uh, she's just, she's phenomenal. Like she just... Goal scoring machine, uh, yeah, all of the, all of those decorations. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at it um, on screen right now, but it's, like it's she, nuts. Uh, and then of course she plays for the Nigeria Nigerian national team, mm -hmm. just crushes it there. Just um, so, remarkable player. But but going to uh, an expansion team, it's uh, sometimes could be a, a bit challenging, right? The players have to learn each other's names. They have to. <laughs> they have to. Yeah. It's a, a whole uh, new project. And it's so a uh, huge signing uh, uh, on their part. But the I, I want we, we it's like we don't know until we see what is what sort of happens on the pitch. And 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 obviously they have a couple of uh, big signing uh, Caprice Didasco is I think a, a strong um, kind of just defensive presence to have one of the defenders of the year on your team is a good start to to bring in veteran leadership and and some uh, consistency not to mention Dana Castellanos Dana Castellanos who as well also another goal scorer so uh, if it was not clear yet that AFC strategy is a very attacking yeah, possession yeah. <laughs> based. It's going to be some sexy football. Yeah, yeah. So um, it should but be. yeah, I, I think that they're going to come out swinging. It should um, be fun. I'm very excited to see the so, uh, the, the the point about. Um, you know, that I was making earlier about like the leaving the challenge, which is Barcelona. Barcelona sometimes. You know, with all due respect, it feels a little bit, especially playing in the league might feel because of the disparity amongst all the clubs. Feels, it could feel a little bit like playing the FIFA on easy mode, right? A little bit. <laughs> yes, because when you tire of winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, this, well, that, when no. I, I saw, the, I saw I the clip while Shrala. The thing here is, like, her role within this side, right, is going to be largely, like, one, she's going to have to take more of a leadership role, just yeah. given her stature. She's a, one of the world's best women footballers. Um, but on top of that, you know, new terrain for sure, right? Like, mm -hmm. 
she's now playing in California and this is this is something she's never done before. Sure. Hasn't lived here, hasn't done any of that. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a challenge in just adapting uh, and, to life here. Sure. Um, the, the, it makes me think about, uh, yeah, Emily Fox, uh, obviously left, um, she was at Courage, Courage. or Louis Courage, right? And she went to Arsenal and, and she's been talking positively about being there. She already has like a, a chant, like the fans have made a, yes, a, a, a chant for her. I forgot exactly. How, uh, Emily Fox is From American. American. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Fun, clever. I have, I love it. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, which, <laughs> but even that, like she, she, she highlighted that and she said like, oh, this, it, we don't really have this back, uh, back home. And I'm like, why don't we have specific player? chance from time to time because we just emulate whatever they do across the pond yeah one of my okay one of my greatest embarrassments as an arsenal fan is like when you go it's when you pick and, them to support no, okay. <laughs> listen listen everton call me when All you're right. relegated I can, I can say that i can say but that it just I, I mean i kind of chuckle a bit when i think about the fact that when we do the chance right like it's kind of like when you learn a song and, mm -hmm. and you but you're you're kind of chanting with an accent. That's English. <laughs> oh, <you're not. laughs> okay. Like I guess. so it's unavoidable because you're just kind of blending in, yeah. but it's just like and I, Arsenal. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm yo, to, I'm from New York. <laughs> like that, Christine, I didn't know you were friends with Adele. Like why you so much like uh, and I shouldn't say that we don't have it at all. Cause I, I, yeah, I have do, heard but... it from time to time. Even at the uh at the NWSL final when I was in San Diego, I did hear But also the we're not we are not a, a very sing song people like yeah, think yeah. about some of the silly words that our british counterparts have used on the regular basis like right. they're like dr seuss walking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah, so yeah. they're way more inclined to break out into rhyming song than we are sure 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 we we, we don't have we need kendrick lamar to come <laughs> right. up with some support bars, <laughs> bars. <laughs> right um the uh but i was thinking about emily fox i saw her the, the, you know she had her first game for arsenal and somebody uh, like put together like a highlight uh uh reel of all like all touches and stuff like that and emily fox is just dominating uh, she's played it was a game arsenal against liverpool arsenal won they they, they dominated this game but this was uh the clip that was kind of uh going around uh which was her uh essentially uh a one two and then just ripping through the entire <laughs> defense uh cutting through them and it, and so there's a little bit of like you know this is this is tougher to do in nwsl it is much tougher to 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 run through uh, uh, defenders like that. So, I I, I was making this point before we started recording, of like, I, I I I'm starting more and more and to to you know I think NWSL saw the 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 competitiveness and and signings that that women's super league uh, um, the 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 you know the. Uh, women's, uh, the, I, forget, I don't know how to say it in German, but the Frauen Fra uh, Bundesliga yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I, I just, uh, hey, I tried. <laughs> it's, you did great. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Um, but I think NWSL saw that and was like, uh, yo, all right, we're not, we're not going to be, um, you know, we don't have the, the, you know, UEFA Women's Champions League. But as when it comes to the the quality of this league, and then also some of the money, the investment is clearly up, and the salary cap cle uh, clearly went up. So NWSL saw that, saw, saw what's going on uh, uh, across the world. So it's they're, they're still figuring out again, getting more Americans to just care about the league and and buy tickets and go to games. But the one thing they can kind of sort out is investment. And, and competitiveness to bring players to this country uh, and play. So when I saw Emily Fox there, I'm like, Did she, is she taking a step back by going to Arsenal? Because it feels a little bit like she's not going to be under the same, playing the same quality players that she plays on, uh, in NWSL week to week because it feels a, this feels a little too e She's very good. I'm not saying that she's not, but this feels too easy. Or am I just being critical of like, is Liverpool just a bad team? So L Liverpool aren't bad. They haven't been in top form. Right now they're sitting in fifth mm -hmm. in the WSL, just to put things into perspective. But what I will say um, in terms of comparison is I think that uh, WSL, the talent is spread more uh, Chelsea has localized. All the, Chelsea has all the players. 
<laughs> Chelsea has an undeniable amount of talent, uh-huh. as does Man City, as do uh, Man United, and then, of course, Arsenal. Yeah. And then I'd say from that point down, um, it's sprinkled, right? Mm-hmm. So, But I think that it, it's still a very like top-heavy league, so you're going to see the most concentration of talent in yeah. the top of the table where they're literally trying to make like slight deviations, right? Like you have a man city with a bunny Shaw mm-hmm. um, and that's not even all of their talent. You know, yeah, like yeah. if you name one player from each side that you're just like, Oh wow. 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 Okay. You know, like Lauren James for Chelsea. That's not even mentioning the fact that like Mia official is there yeah, yeah. or Frank any, Kirby. Right, like, like, there's a, yeah, exactly. Never right. Ends, yeah. um, or Arsenal with Viv. Like, mm-hmm. um, I Aunt think Viv. that what Aunt you're Viv. actually yeah, what you're actually <laughs> seeing with Emily Fox is that she has had the most seamless transition between NWSL with the courage, who she was wonderful for, mm-hmm. to Arsenal, which is unique. I think that she's a uniquely talented player. I think that somehow she looks distinctly built for for this. Okay. She just she's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I and mean, she ended up on the right side. So, like, despite the fact that, yes, she's now abroad and she's, you know, playing in, in London and, and everything else, like, she hasn't skipped a beat. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 great to see, but I didn't I expected nothing less. This I, I thought she would adjust just fine, but then it's like, oh, not only is she adjusting, I think she might automatically, not automatically, but arguably become the best right back in, in the Women's Super League because that's... You watch highlights like this, and it's just like, all right, what well, did did was she given Arsenal's tactics while she was at the Courage? Like, how did she already like, have this all figured out? The, the low key like pipeline, where it's like from like locally secret under like under, yeah, yeah. underground, like dig up this Bro, basket. It's like they're sending messages. She's playing, and she's already like, Viv, you're supposed to be over here. She's like. It's your first day. How you know where I'm supposed to be? <laughs> Secret messages to like <laughs> Coach Sean Nehas, like play Emily like this, but don't tell her why Dude, for like a year. Like, it's a, it's crazy. No, so it's uh no, it's, it's uh, amazing. No, no, I think uh, uh you know she obviously she's gonna do fine, and I hope maybe Arsenal uh, she'll help Arsenal win the league or whatever. But no, it is a uh, it's a great thing to see so far. Uh, let's wrap up there. Christine Kupo, thank you so much for, for joining me. As always, the Kupogans, uh, you know, uh, crushing it per usual. Let people know uh, where they can follow you, where they can see your work. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm still referring to it as Twitter. I'm still on there uh, doing that thing, occasionally slinging tweets. I'm calling them tweets still, too, <laughs> just out of principle. Um, at C. Kupo uh, on IG at Miss Kupo. Um, and of course, follow along on Galazzo Network, especially attacking third for all of the very, very important Woso news. Let's go. All right. Uh, and as always, make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans on all social channels. Uh, where what else? What do we do? We We're on cool, oh, DraftKings Network. DraftKings Network. Subscribe I don't know where YouTube. the show <laughs> airs. Subscribe to the YouTube. <laughs> oh, we also do have an announcement. If you are a DraftKings Network viewer, we will be at 11 a.m. next week because of some Super Bowl schedule changes. Mm. So in Instead of being at, I think we're at 8.30 on Mondays and 10.30 on Thursdays, we'll be at 11 a.m. both days. Okay, so DraftKings Network's folks, uh, you know, apparently the Super Bowl is some sort of big deal. Go I'm, Niners! I'm, am I allowed to say Super Bowl? Is it the big game? I, no one's going to be checking the <laughs> soccer podcast to talk about I don't know if I'm allowed to even use those words. You got to bleep out. You, we got to leave all the curses, but bleep out Super <laughs> yeah, Bowl. <exactly. laughs> I don't I'm wanna... sure they love that. Listen, just call it like the 49ers celebration. You're Match. a big Niners fan, right? Massive. All right. Well, I mean, I'm, I just don't want. I don't know. I don't even care who wins. I'm just like I'm not. Wow. Just Purdy. <laughs> Purdy. Yeah. Purdy. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for the analysis. My Christian my accountant looking <laughs> quarterback. He's a very sweet boy. He seems it. He seems it. Uh, so best of luck to uh, whatever team you uh, support in uh, out there. Um, uh, you know, I'm just uh, just. Taylor Swift is going to win regardless, okay? <laughs> Taylor Swift better get on stage at the halftime show. I don't care. I mean, no if they shot. don't incorporate Taylor Swift in Zero some way. Wait, the, the, the halftime, isn't it Dolly? No, it, it's, it's Usher. It's Usher. Oh. 
Who's Dolly? Dolly Parton. Who do you mean? Oh, who's I, Dolly? <laughs> you know, weirdly enough, all I was thinking was of the the AI image generator Dolly. <laughs> I'm like, that's how much of a Christian's dork. brain is broken, I'm a bro. nerd, bro. <laughs> our, our Lord and Savior Dolly Parton. How dare you? All right, I need the full Queen government. Queen Dolly. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. So we'll be back uh, next week uh, with some fun shows. Uh, so we'll see you then, everybody. Peace.